Welcome, welcome back to Sissy Spaces. I hope you're enjoying your day today, and I want to thank you for sharing a part of it with me. Today's video has tons of new cleaning motivation, as well as some DIY furniture flips. And as promised in my last video, we're finishing our monthly cleaning goal of cleaning all the walls within our home for the month of June. Along with cleaning and DIY furniture flips, we're also budgeting for next month as well as doing some meal planning for the remainder of this month. And along with laundry motivation, I have some exciting news to share with you. So I hope you enjoyed this one and it motivates you to do some cleaning, budgeting, meal planning, and future DIY flips of your own. And as always, if you enjoyed today's video, at the end of the video, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share. While I was cleaning the walls in the office, the boys were removing this desk from my youngest son's room, as well as the larger desk from the gym, and placing them on this plastic drop cloth. My plan is to remove the existing stain in order to give it a raw wood appearance. This is my first DIY furniture flip using the heavy duty oven cleaner, and I must say, I'm proud of the results. It did take two days to complete, but the process was easy and budget friendly. I taped off the wrought iron legs on the smaller desk to prevent the oven cleaner from stripping off the paint. I also sprayed both pieces with the oven cleaner twice to ensure they were completely covered, but also applied a third coat to the larger desk and allowed them to sit overnight in order to give the product time to work. After washing my hands, we're going to continue to clean the office. Not only are we cleaning the office today, but we're also cleaning the guest room, gym, my carriage coffee pot, the catwalk, and half bath. My sister's visiting this weekend, whom I haven't seen in almost a year, so I want to ensure the guest room is clean and tidy before her arrival. She also likes using the gym, so cleaning it was a top priority as well. I plan to decorate for fall in the coming months, but decorating these bookshelves are not on the list. I also hadn't planned to decorate these shelves when I decorated for summer, but did add a few American flags as a nice little touch. By the way, if you haven't seen my Summer Clean and Decorate With Me video published two weeks ago, go back and check it out. It has received the highest number of views within 24 hours than any of my other videos to date. Our fur baby Max likes to sit under this desk whenever it storms outside, so it's currently covered in hair. I need to give it a thorough cleaning under here to remove any hair trapped in the router's hardware components, which, if left untouched, will hinder the router's performance and lead to connectivity issues. It's been about a little under an hour since I sprayed oven cleaner on this desk, so I want to check to see if this oven cleaner hack really works. And as you can see, it does. After spraying this desk for a third time, I left it alone until morning. The doors and the inside of the desk was stubborn, but the oven cleaner did remove about 75% of the stain. I do plan to tackle other DIY furniture flips, but next time we'll use Hubby Sander which will speed up the process while smoothing it at the same time. It's been a little over a month since I last cleaned, polished, and conditioned this wood desk. So today, I plan to spend a little time cleaning the entire desk using the Pledge Expert Care Wood Oil. This is another furniture piece I plan a DIY, and again, my goal is to remove the stain to give it more of a raw wood look appearance. And when done, I'm hoping it will be similar in color to the baskets located on this bookshelf. I figure 
since I already had pledge on this microfiber cloth, I might as well use it to clean the doors of this bookshelf. And as you can see, the desk and the doors were filthy. Whenever I clean the office, I also like cleaning the leather office chair. And I only use one product to do this, and that's the Wyman's Leather and Conditioning Wipes. I not only use these wipes on our leather furniture, but I also use them to clean and condition our leather coats, shoes, and my leather purses. By the way, I keep calling this a bookshelf, but it's actually a bookcase because a bookshelf or bookshelves are not usually permanently fixed to the wall. I cleaned this office chair on this channel, my mom pointed out that I failed to clean the base, which is often overlooked. She was a professional housekeeper for over 30 years, not only cleaning private residences, but also hotels. I'm not a professional cleaner, but she did teach me and continues to teach me everything I need to know about maintaining a clean and tidy home. I do plan to wash Max's crate liner and throw, but first I want to clean and disinfect his crate pad using the non-bleach Clorox wipes. When I touch his things, he gets very anxious, so I try to move quickly while giving it a thorough cleaning at the same time. We also keep several of these towels we use to line his crate pad clean at all times to keep his anxiety at a minimal while changing them out. And as you can see, Max came running once I started lining his crate pad. And after the liner is replaced, he'll sit in his crate for at least an hour to ensure he leaves the scent behind. Dogs also identify their family members, mostly through scent. So Max, along with other dogs, do enjoy fresh, clean laundry because it smells like their family. Along with shredding today's mail, I'm also checking to see if the shredder is full. Tonight I plan to add up all of our receipts to see if we stayed on budget for the month of June in order to plan and adjust the budget for this month. So there will be a lot of receipts to shred shortly thereafter. Uh -huh. The office is clean, minus the mopping, of course, which will occur later this evening. I'm placing Max's towels and throws on the sanitized cycle in order to give him a thorough cleaning. I don't use any special cleaning products to clean his items because they're not needed, and I wash his items separate from the rest of the family. Also, I always clean and disinfect the washer and dryer once the load is complete. Up next is cleaning the Courage coffee maker. Every month at either the beginning or end of the month, I disassemble the Courage, deep clean it along with its parts, as well as change the filter and descale it. I didn't film descaling it or changing the filter on this day because I always try to allow the coffee maker and its parts to dry overnight, but I will film it and include it in next week's video. I don't use any special cleaners to clean the Courage. Just Stein dish detergent mixed in warm water and a microfiber cloth. And if I find any mineral deposits, I use an old brush located under the sink to remove it. I hope everyone enjoyed and had a safe 4th of July holiday. If you celebrate it, what did you do? Hubby grilled hot dogs, sausages, and burgers while I worked on this video. And we watched our neighbors almost burn down the neighborhood with all the firecrackers they used. So again, if you're willing to share, how did you celebrate the 4th of July holiday? I like washing each part of the carriage by hand then placing them on a dish towel to air dry overnight. You can place most of the parts in the dishwasher, 
but I like cleaning all of them together in order to avoid losing some of the parts. My very first time cleaning this carriage, I did place all the parts in the dishwasher, but once done, I had to replace the water reservoir lid because it warped upon removal from the dishwasher. Now that the carriage is clean, it's time to deep clean the guest room. Like the office, we are cleaning the walls, moldings, as well as the trim located at the bottom of the window. I washed the sheets last night and had our youngest son place them on the bed, which is one less thing I need to do today. I've also decided to add some new decor to the nightstand and I'm storing the lamp, which is currently located on the nightstand, in the closet. In my summer clean and decorate with me video, I added new decor to the dresser, which included a lamp. So the secondary lamp on the nightstand is not needed. I hope my sister likes the new decor. And at the end of the video, let me know your thoughts on the new decor. Instead of using the Swifter dry sweeping cloths, I decided to save a few coins and purchase the Walmart brand of dry sweeping cloths. Boy, was that a mistake. They rolled up several times while dusting the walls and didn't trap as much dust while dry mopping the floors. Once I've used all of the Walmart brand of dry sweeping cloths up, I will definitely switch back to the Swifter brand of dry sweeping cloths. Like the old saying goes, you get what you paid for. Almost knocked a few frames off the wall, but luckily I didn't. Now that we're down with the walls, we'll use the Swifter Duster to dust the window trim, bed frames, TV, frame, dresser, and eventually the nightstand before decorating it. I am using the Swifter Dusters and have no plans in the future to change them because they do a great job and are worth every penny. I'm moving this steel decor ladder back against the wall because it almost fell off the bed a few times. After repositioning the bed against the wall, we'll place the lamp that's currently on the nightstand in the closet, then continue dusting, starting with the TV and decor located on the dresser, then the dresser itself. The larger desk that I'm DIYing today was a part of this bedroom set, but once our youngest son outgrew it, we placed the desk in the gym. Over time, the desk has received a lot of scratches because of its new location, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to DIY it today. For those that are new to my channel, the empty frame located on my right is reserved for our youngest son's college diploma. He starts his senior year of college in the fall, and we're praying he graduates on time. By the way, as of next summer, we will no longer have any kids in school, which is great, but also sad at the same time. It seems like yesterday when we dropped him and his younger brother off at pre-K. Boy, does time fly, and I really miss those days. After thoroughly cleaning this nightstand, we'll make the bed, then I'll share with you the great news I mentioned earlier in the video, as well as the new decor I plan to use on this nightstand, so continue watching. Turning this duvet with the duvet insert back to the bed once I add the sheets and coverlet. 
Yes, I am aware it's summer, but we keep them on the beds all year long. And during the spring and summer, remove them before bedtime. These are linen sheets, which are very soft and comfortable. Along with them, I'm adding a waffle weave coverlet, along with linen pillow covers over four Tempur-Pedic pillows. By the way, I'm excited to announce that we heard back from the contractor and have agreed to move forward on our master bathroom remodel, which starts next month. I will be taking you along with me as we choose the tile, freestanding tub, quartz countertops, and shower fixtures. So if you haven't already subscribed, do so at the end of the video so you don't miss it. Thank Rose Forever for sponsoring this part of today's video. They're a New York-based brand launched in 2019 and are known for designing luxurious rose boxes with natural roses that stay fresh and gorgeous for at least a year. The roses are crafted by professional flower artisans and treated with natural oil to preserve its freshness and beauty. The flowers are also arranged inside of a hat box inspired by the Parisian chick style offering dozens of design choices. And they have an enormous choice of rose colors, box shapes, and materials, allowing you to customize them to match your individual taste or home interior design. Out of the many choices available, I chose the Hydrangea Bouquet in this white ceramic vase, which pairs well with this citrus sandalwood candle. And for my friends, they're offering a $25 discount code with the code SPACES25. So if you're in the market for scented candles and top-of-the-line rose bouquets, check them out and remember to use the discount code SPACES25 to receive $25 off your order. And I'll be sure to place the link and discount code in my description box. To finish this guest room, we need to tidy the decor on the dresser, then dry mop the floors. I also need to check on the desk that I'm DIYing, as well as Max's towels and throw that's currently in the wash. Figured since I already had it out, I might as well dry mop the catwalk as well. For the sake of time, we're not mopping the guest room, but we'll do so tomorrow along with the catwalk and the gym. It's been a few hours since using the heavy duty oven cleaner on this smaller dresser and drawers. And as you can see, about 80% of the steam is already gone. To speed up the process, I am sanding the remainder of it off because hubby wants to mow the lawn first thing tomorrow morning, so we need to move these dressers from the backyard. And after washing my hands, I noticed Max's towels and throws were done and ready to go in the dryer. the final load of the day, I always dry out the soap dispenser compartment, door to the washer, and rubber gasket around the drum and leave the door open overnight, which prevents a buildup of mold. Today, I'm also using my vinegar mixture, which consists of Don dish detergent, white distilled vinegar, and water to clean and disinfect the drum. Up next is cleaning the gym, starting with dry mopping the walls. As of today and tomorrow, our cleaning goal of cleaning all the walls within our home is complete. I'm not planning any cleaning goals for this month through September, 
because my goal is to finish the remaining projects on my to-do list, which is to repaint the furniture in my youngest son's room, remodel our owner suite bath, and continue to DIY several more furniture pieces within our home. has been using this Bowflex a lot more than the rest of the family and as you can see it does need to be cleaned. Today we're dusting it only but we'll wipe it down with a Clorox wipe prior to my sister's arrival which is in a few days as she likes to use it as well. I just heard the jingle in the LG dryer, which means Max's towels and throw are ready to be removed. After that, we'll deep clean the dryer using the dryer vent cleaner kit I ordered off Amazon, which is compatible with the Dyson V6, 7, 8, 10, 11, and 12, as well as the V15. It has this flexible dryer vent remover hose attachment that is much easier to use than the other dryer vent cleaners I've used in the past. Our laundry is done and our gym washer and dryer are clean, which means we can do some budgeting and meal planning. For those that are new to my channel, the family and I store all of our receipts throughout the month in these two baskets. The boys share a basket as well as me and hubby. And at the end of the month, I add up all the receipts, which tells us where our money has gone for the previous month. I then adjust the budget for the following month based on last month's total. For example, for the month of June, we budgeted $1,200 for groceries, but spent almost $1,400. So for the month of July, we need to pull funds from other categories to cover the additional costs. We also follow what's called the 50-20-30 rule, which recommends putting 50% of your money towards needs, 30% towards wants, and 20% towards saving. This rule, along with saving receipts and a little frugality, has allowed us to remain debt free and keep it off for the past nine years. Along with budgeting, I meal plan for the following month, rotating our favorite recipes throughout the month and inserting any new recipes we're willing to try. By the way, hubby plans to grill later this evening, so I need to clean these kitchen countertops beforehand. It's the next morning and I'm reassembling the carriage so I can make my first cup of coffee of the day. By the way, last night's grilled chicken, corn and broccoli was absolutely delicious. My plan today is to finish the DIY furniture flips by applying wood oil to all the pieces. Although not shown, I did rinse off all the oven cleaner beforehand and allowed it to air dry for at least six hours before applying the wood oil which is the same wood oil we use on our cutting boards. The pieces are not perfect, but I am loving the raw wood look. To maintain them, I will need to wash them with soap and water periodically and reapply the wood oil as needed. Again, they're not perfect, but for my first DIY furniture flip, I'm happy with the results. Centering this desk under the TV, I need to restock it with my youngest son's books and school supplies. Again, he starts his senior year in the fall, and to prepare, we've already purchased the school supplies needed and will purchase his books before classes begin. Throughout the years, I've always tried to purchase school supplies as soon as the lists were made available, either on the school's website or posted in the stores, because purchasing supplies right before school starts, raises my anxiety and causes too much unneeded stress. It 
It's taking some time, but I'm trying to organize it the way he had it. Also, most of these books are from his prior years of college, and he's keeping them to refer back to if needed. He also plans to resell or donate them back to the school once he graduates. This larger desk required a lot more work than a smaller one, and the oven cleaner didn't remove all of the stain as I would have liked. I did sand it often, but to no avail. I do love that it's much lighter than before, and we'll try using the sander on it in the coming weeks. In the meantime, we'll use a clear desk pad that I ordered off Amazon to cover the top. This desk is much heavier than it looks, so I was happy our oldest son was off today to help. Once centered under the TV, I want to restock it with hubby's memorabilia, and again, I'm trying to organize it as it was before. And as you can see, there's still some stain on the bottom legs, and again, I do plan to use risers and a sander to remove it in the coming weeks. Now that our DIY furniture flips are complete, I want to dry mop these floors because I plan to mop them along with the guest room and catwalk later this evening. And after we're done, we'll deep clean the half bath. Whenever I'm expecting overnight guests, I always clean the half bath along with the guest room, of course, and the gym, kitchen, and family room. I always use the same products when cleaning our bathrooms, which are my vinegar mixture, Clorox wipes, and spray away glass cleaner. The tools I routinely use to clean our bathrooms are the Swifter duster and dry mop, paper towels, the Rubbermaid scrubber, and a Scotch-Brite sponge. At one point, I was using my microfiber cloths to clean off the spray away glass cleaner, but found paper towels did a better job. Also, that's one less microfiber cloth used and needed to be washed. Along with this, I like using the Rubbermaid scrubber to clean around the fixtures, but if you don't have this tool, an old toothbrush will work just fine. And because this is a porcelain sink, I'm using a Scotch-Brite sponge to clean the top but on my granite and quartz countertops, I use Clorox wipes instead. For sanitary reasons, I only use Clorox wipes to clean the toilet and use wipe distilled vinegar with a toilet bowl brush to clean the toilet bowl. We do have a septic tank and because most toilet bowl cleaners contain bleach and some are even made with hydrochloric acid, which is not safe to use with a septic tank. Over the years, I've found white distilled vinegar works just fine and even better than some popular toilet bowl cleaners. Once done here and after washing my hands, I'm going to take a quick break, then return to finish cleaning the half bath. We still need to dust the moldings, sweep, and mop the floors. During the break, I also disassembled my Dyson V15 vacuum so I can deep clean it later. As promised, I will include it in next week's video. Also, as you can see, while I was cleaning the half bath, hubby was hard at work mowing the lawn.
that was a quick break, but I did enjoy it. By the way, I also dusted the walls in here, but didn't film it because you've already seen me dust the walls in the guest room and gym, and I also didn't want to bore you. Once dusting's done, we'll dry mop the floors using the Swifter Dry Sweeping Mop. Along with dry mopping the floors in here, I also want to dry mop the floors in this small hallway and also inside my decor closet. I cleaned my decor closet two weeks ago on the night prior to filming my summer clean and decorate with me video, so I'm not ashamed to show it off. I still need to store my fall decor in here, but I'm holding off for now until I decorate for fall. So for now, those items are taking up space on our formal dining room table. I also plan to give you guys another decor haul prior to decorating for fall. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy Spaces. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so at this time, as well as like, comment, and share. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.